Hello everyone, it's Anna from Viking Stitches. Um, I thought I'd do a little bit of an extra video um, about how to use the Cross Stitch Saga app, um, as I'd had a few people ask me how to use it. Um, it doesn't seem to be as commonly known as apps like Markup and Pattern Keeper. Um, as you can see from there, I do have Markup, um, which I use for patterns that are PDF. Um, because Saga doesn't accept PDF, um, and I'll get into that in a little bit as to why I think that reason is. Um, but yeah, Saga is my favorite app. Um, I really love it. Um, and yeah, it's this one right here. Um, and let's just jump straight in. So first of all, when you open it, it should be in this window uh, you can see a bunch of my whips there um, in various states of being finished but this pattern right here uh, comes free with the app so I'll be using that to show you how to use it. Um, so first of all um, so you've got the pattern here um, you've got a little bar up here that you can see this is where whatever um, color you've chosen is um, and then there's a bar over here with all sorts of options. Um, first thing I would say you want to do when you open up a new pattern is to make sure that this lock is on because this means that you can't do anything while you're trying to figure things out. Um, once you open it then you can start marking off as you can see. Um, so I'm just gonna undo that. There we go. Um, so let's lock that again so that I can choose. So you can use just two fingers to swipe in and out quite easily. When it's locked, you can use one finger to move it around. Um, sorry, ignore my stitchy group um, pop-ups there. So I can choose which color. So let's try this gray one here. So that's 415 there and to highlight you press this little um, swatch button there like so and now all the gray is highlighted and I can still move things around which I quite like that I can have things highlighted and I can move I don't have to be switching between toggling between things um, so yeah so I'll unlock there and then say I've done um, these stitches here in the middle and I can undo them, mark them off, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I can just swipe across, say that I've done all of these greys and I can just swipe across there and it will catch all of those. Um, but say that I had made a mistake and I hadn't actually done this grey down here. Um, you could obviously do the um, back return button there, or you can press this little button here, where it now turns into kind of a highlighter, and then I can redo that one. And now that one is re-highlighted. You can see that there. I've re-highlighted those. Um, so that's quite useful, I find. Um, another very useful um option when I'm trying to figure like when I'm counting things and I'm maybe trying to figure out where I am in a pattern this little pen icon here if you click that and now it will swap colors around so now the color the things that I have marked off are colored and the things that aren't are in grayscale so that's very useful I find um, and I'll swap that back over. So, for example, if I were to, let's say I mark off all of these and then switch over to that. So now you can see all of these in, are now in color um, and it makes it a lot easier, especially if there's like um, bits that are on random places and stuff like that. It's, it, it's very helpful to be able to swap that around um what else i'm just gonna undo those right 
So you can press the, you can see that there's an X up here, so you can press that. So here you can see all of your cross stitches, um, whatever colors they are. However, the brilliant thing about um, this app is that, as you can see, it counts partial crosses. Um, this pattern has half crosses. Um, I also have patterns, for example, um, the Midna pattern from Make It Pink has uh, quarter stitches. Um, so, like, I don't know how you do Make It Pink patterns without Saga. It's really, really necessary, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we've got backstitch and we've got French knot, so let's try the backstitch. So I've just highlighted the backstitch there, and so you can see all the backstitch is outlined. And I'm going to unlock, and I can tick these off. So that will count that as being done. And then we can also, um, let's do French knots. Um, when things are highlighted, you need to use two fingers to move things around. And as you can see, there's three French knots in this pattern right there, there, and there. So we can mark them off as done. So that's very useful. I love that about this app. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let's unhighlight. What else can I show you? Let's have a look. So we can... Um, do like a mock-up, that's the little eye icon here, and that will give you a little mock-up of what the end product should look like. Um, there's lots of other things here, and this is definitely not a um, exhaustive list of things. Um, uh, so here on the graph bit, if we click on that, this will give you all your stats. Um, so you can see here how many French knots, and it thinks we've done all three there, how many back stitches, cross stitches. And you can see here where we had like total cross stitch minus how many we've done, and how many are left. And it also has this marathon option, which is very good for cross stitch games. Um, because uh, this will count, for example, in a lot of the cross stitch games, back stitch, you count two back stitches. Um, to be the same as one full cross stitch, which makes sense. So marathon will count in those sorts of rules. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can see the list there of how it counts things. So one cross e equals one cross stitch, one cross equals half and half cross stitch, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and this will list, um, you know, when you're stitching over, you know, days and months and whatever, it will list out here what you've done and you can drop down and see how many of each type you've done um, and your progress there. And there's also the um, wastebasket uh, that you can basically empty out all of your data and start over if you wanted to. Not that I think there's many that would want to. Um, so uh, here, the bell icon is where you can um, set up goals. And I use this a lot for my stitchy games, where I will put in, for example, I generally just call them however much I'm my target is. So I'll name, you know, I'll give them a name there of 100. And put in a target of 100. Um, I generally have them count by marathon. And the sprint is just, I think, it just means that it will um, track how long it takes. So you can see there it's starting to count and it has zero out of 100. So let's say I start marking things off. So you can see there it's counted 5.5 stitches. Oh, this is because I'm set on the back stitch, that's why. Hang on. Uh, whichever one. There we go. Now it's going to start marking off. And now you can see, it's, well, thinks I'm almost up to 100. But 
that is very useful. At least for me. <laughs> Um, we've got this little icon for um, parking, so you just select that and then wherever you want to park you just long hold, I say, as it doesn't work, well, maybe because it's locked. I don't use parking very much so I'm not super familiar with it. Come on, why are you being difficult? Definitely does work. I have gotten it to work in the past. I've used it on my Zelda. That's the only place I've done like parking and it wasn't really my thing and I probably won't do it again. Come on. I don't know why it's not working guys. I, I, I have done it before. I think my it's also the angle as I'm trying to do this around the camera. Okay, well we're gonna ignore that, but it does work. It has worked in the past. Um what else can we look at? Um you can put rulers so that you can if you need to see you know, how how many, um, where the grid is, how many are in the grid. Um, I don't use it very often. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Where was it? Was it the other one? It might be the other one. This one. No, it's not that one. Sorry, guys. This is being a bit chaotic. This one is because I couldn't. There. So that adds in the the center line, I think. What is going on? There we go. It's there. You can see it there. That's the center line. Um, what else was there? There's also, yes, you can have a fiddle with background if you fancy. And I did this recently when I was trying to um, decide on fabric for my winter rabbit from, I think it's Kids by SA on Etsy. Um, I think I've shown you guys that one. But yeah, you can kind of have a play around with you know, colors, um, so you can see, and that it's more useful for patterns that aren't, um, full coverage, um, but it's useful. You can get sort of an idea of whether a color would go look good. Um, I think that's most of everything that I can show you. Um, like I said, it's not I'm not an expert. Is this not like everything? Um, the only thing I was going to show is so, like I mentioned, um, you can't upload PDFs. It won't accept it. Um, and I'm guessing this is because of you know backstitch and front knots and all these like partial stitches. Like a PDF, I don't think it's going to be able to cover that. Um, but what I will say is that, so if you click here, so you can see which um, files it will accept. And what the artist can actually do is if the artist has this app and is using any of these, then they can upload into Saga and then export it as a Saga file, um, which then sort of locks it from other people like making little adjustments and whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that as more people learn about this app, that it's going to be more common for artists to supply this type of file, um, because I do think it's an absolutely brilliant app, um, and more people should use it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I have markup as well, just to cover the, those patterns that are PDF only. And, you know, if 
if you are doing, um, you know, full coverage, full cross only, then you don't really need all of these fancy extra bits. Something like Markup or Pattern Keeper is going to be perfectly fine. Um, but for the more complicated patterns, then it is really brilliant to have. Um, but I think I'll leave it there. I've waffled on. Sorry about that. Um, but I hope it's helpful for people. Um, yeah. And I will see you guys hopefully in a few weeks when I do a proper video. Right. Bye.